How are you? I hope that you can hear in the background some bells tolling saying it's eight o'clock. Happy Wednesday. It's my first announcement since we can, came back from break and I'm very happy to be with you today. It's different times. We know we're going to be doing this for a longer time than anticipated, but I couldn't wish for a better team to be together with at eight o'clock in the morning, okay? So I'm very happy that you are here with me and I hope that whoever joins us later on is going to be sharing um, the joy of being part of the Fenwick family, okay? So um, I'm going to share with you a usual PowerPoint because I think since I'm a visual learner, I like hearing things, visualizing things. Um, and what inspired the main message of this PowerPoint is something that Mr. Noonan read yesterday. It was a quote, and I'm going to share that with you, that we are all writers in a way. Um, we are writing our autobiography, we are writing essays, we are writing letters, emails, but I go back to the idea of writing our own autobiography. And so it gives us a sense of control in times when we cannot control much, but we can control how we react. So here we go. As usual, I will share the screen and I will choose the PowerPoint that I've been using. Um, sometimes it's misbehave, as you know, but the idea is to make sure that um, you are with me in this journey of writing this chapter in the Fenwick life. And so here we are. Hopefully you will see that. Can you see that? Thumbs up if you can see that. Good. Okay. I love my team. Um, so you'll say, oh, Cecilia, this is very feminine. It's on purpose. You'll see sunlights down the road, why I chose this theme. It's my favorite color. But also the idea is, as you reflect on your autobiography, what will this chapter in your life look like five years from now, 55 years from now, 555 years from now? We don't know that yet, but we can write this page today together. So this is the quote that Mr. Noonan shared. Yes, one of the quotes, many beautiful quotes, but I was exploiting this verb, write. Write in your own heart that every day is the best day in the year. He's rich who owns the day and no one owns the day who allows it to be invaded with fret and anxiety. Finish every day and be done with it. You have done what you could. Some blunders and absurdities, no doubt, crept in. Forget them as soon as you can. Tomorrow is a new day. Begin it well and serenely with too high a spirit to be cumbered with your old nonsense. This new day is too dear with its hopes and invitations to waste the moment on the yesterdays. And so with that in mind, I'm trying to propose you this small short reflection. What title will describe this chapter in your book, in our book? Dropless almost defeated me, pandemic at home, or affirming each other. Adversity made us stronger, made me stronger. And today we honor St. Catherine of Siena in Italy. Father Michele can tell us many, many more details about this amazing lady who was born number 25th with a twin during a plague in Siena. Uh, she didn't learn how to write for, for a long time. And nevertheless, we are still remembering her, honoring her. Some of you know why. Some of you say, what? Number 25th uh, doesn't know how to write. And here we are. So what is her legacy? Usually she's known for speaking the truth to power. Uh, 
She has many things in common with us. She attended plague victims in Siena. She was also transformative in how she wanted the church to be united. At that time, the Pope separated. One went from, to Avignon in France, the other one stayed in Rome. And she was instrumental in encouraging the unity, move back to Rome. The church should be at, at Rome. Uh, and this was very weird for a woman in the Middle Ages. Uh, and the femininity in, in these lights, it's because she never shied away from her femininity either. So she broke her, uh, this peace between um, warring fractions in Italy. Remember, she didn't know how to write for a long time. So she dictated uh, the dialogue, a conversation between the soul and God, that it's amazing. And she died young, but she's the first woman first lay person to be named doctor of the church. It took a while for her to get that. So here we are, and I'm going to um, start in the middle of everything with a prayer, because I like making sure that all of you are here, even those who get here late. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And the intentions today is we're praying for John, a neighbor of a Fenwick a faculty member who has died from the coronavirus and for his surviving children and grandchildren. And we pray for all the recent um, deaths in the Fenwick family uh, and for those who are sick, struggling or lonely in nursing homes. And this is from St. Catherine of Siena. So I thought it was very timely uh, to think about this today. Here we go. This is what I want you to do right up to the end of your life, growing from strength to strength. Persevere day after day, never give up. I want you to take up the staff of the most holy cross upon which all the virtues are planted and rooted and contemplate the lamb slain for us with such blazing fire that it must burn and consume whatever coldness and hard heartedness or soft love there might be in our soul. So get up with true humility and a willingness to suffer, to follow the meek lamb with a heart free and generous and filled with charity. Abandon yourself for him, learning from this Jesus, who in order to give you the life of grace, gave up his bodily life. And as a sign of his generosity, he opened up his whole self by creating a bath within his open side after he had died to show us his love. Do you want to live in security? Then hide yourself within this side and see that you are never found outside this open heart. Though once you enter, you will discover such joy and sweetness that you will never want to leave. For it is an open, storehouse filled with spices and overflowing with mercy and that mercy gives grace and leads to everlasting life where there is life without death society without boredom hunger without pain perfect and complete joy with no bitterness at all there our appetite and taste are satisfied oh indescribable immeasurable charity what drove you to give us this true good, only the boundless love with which you made us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So going back to your autobiography, it's your call, okay? Um, over the break, I emailed the faculty members. I love my team, uh, trying to inspire them because it's hard to think that we are not going to see our students for a long time. In our physical setting, the virtual setting is there. Look for the good in, in you and in others. Affirm each other. Try to put that into your chapter today, into your, the page that you write for your life today. Uh, they say that hun one drop of honey attracts more flies than a ton of vinegar. So use that honey, affirm. Align your energy, our energy, creativity, collaborative spirit, become one common purpose. Start with your family, start with your siblings, 
Start with your friends and empower yourself. You're writing this page. Bring your best self to write this chapter in your life, one page at a time. And I reminded our faculty, ourselves, purpose enables and ennobles everyone. So make sure you write a beautiful page today. That's all you, you can do, okay? So part of the announcement is to make sure that every student, not seniors, make, uh, you have to make an appointment with your counselor and discuss the course registration for next year. You have time until May 8th. Do not procrastinate. You might not have a slot. So I will send you an email today reminding how to sign up and schedule your meeting in picket time. Today we also have a town call with the incoming freshman families for the class of 2024. And tomorrow we have a town hall for the senior families, students, parents, and everyone is invited as usual. Um, we really want to share some ideas, and I'm sure we'll get more ideas on how to make this a memorable chapter in our seniors' lives. As Mr. Noonan said yesterday in the Tuesday announcement, signs are being delivered, so the celebration has begun. So think about that. St. Catherine of Siena did not know that people were going to be talking about her five years after her, her death, 55 years after her death. 555 years after her death. She didn't know how to write and read for a, longer, for a long time. So think about that and write a beautiful page. Take care, everyone. We love you and we are with you.